r slash ask reddit what were the early 2000s like here's how to replicate the 2000s experience take every bit of content in your netflix and spotify history now find a friend who actually had cable internet who has amassed all this content on a collection of portable hard drives buy a 50 stack of reiterable cds and the same and dvds burn all your content onto those discs don't put any of it in cases because the discs were 10 c each but cases were one dollar don't label any of it because you lost the special marker now spread those unlabeled discs through your home and your car scratched cds sucked that's what bananas were for rub them in to fix the scratch you're going to get starkly different answers from people who were kids in the zeros and those who weren't. For the latter, it's the decade where everything changed. I was in my early 20s to 30 in the zeros. Pop culture wise, I don't see them as terribly different to be honest. It was all there in an earlier form. PS2 slash PS3 instead of PS5. Real player instead of Zoom or Duo. Downloading movies instead of Netflix. Sharing music instead of Apple Music. And sure smartphones weren't the thing, but cell phones and texting were extremely common and the internet had been graphical for over 15 years by 2010. Huge internet chapters like Napster and the new digital act had already come and gone. If there's anything different, I'd say internet dating was still considered kinda nerdy in the early zeros. Pop culture wise, today is a sleek version of back then, everything runs faster and is more intuitive. On a global scale though, as cliche as it is, everything changed after 9-11. It still seems strange to me that anyone under the age of 25 have always had terrorism. Extremist and incredible political divides is just a normal part of daily life. And while some areas of the world have always known those things, most developed countries had been shielded from that kind of talk for decades. Once that started, it has persisted until today. If not it's become more normal. And watching the global community respond to a world that's instantly connected and wired together has been frightening to watch. The spread of pseudoscience. People's beliefs switching on a dime according to their feelings. Basically the rise and acceptance of the stupid, if anything. That's the most vivid difference now compared to back then. The period before Facebook was nice. In the early zeros you could be blissfully unaware of everything your old schoolmates or distant relatives were thinking doing. The average imbecile didn't have a platform for spreading their bad ideas. Because it happened gradually. Even people that lived through it. Don't realize how badly Facebook changed everything. I was 10 in the 2000s it was awesome. A simpler time. Didn't really go onto social media until 2005. That was my space time. But yet, yeah, you hung out with your friends by them knocking on the door. You hung out with your neighbors. Or you would call them on the phone. Usually after 9. Haha. <laughs> Cause it was free to call them. Or you used the house phone. I remember watching shows like Cablum. All that. The Amanda Show. Time flies. I remember running home to catch the start of Toonami. I watched Sailor Moon after school. I was in high school from 2000 to 2004. None of us had cell phones. And most of us didn't have cars. There was that one friend with a license who drove the parents minivan and that's how we ever went anywhere or did anything in junior or senior year. The kids on my street and I would walk circles around our block until it was after dark. Or sit on each other's front steps. Sometimes we'd climb trees. Or onto the roof of a neighbor's garage we didn't have anywhere very exciting to go nearby. And everything cost money. A couple times we filched from my parents liquor and added it to lemonade or iced tea and played board games while tipsy. I got my own PC in 2000 or 2001. YouTube didn't exist. Amazon wasn't even on my radar yet. There was no Facebook or Twitter. Social media mostly consisted of the kids in my high school talking on AIM chat. An AOL instant messaging program. We'd obsess about our profiles and away messages on it. And change our screen names when we grew out of them it also had an option to share files. So I got a ton of downloaded music from friends that way. Phyllis ring sites like Kaza. Morpheus. And Limui were each big in turn streaming video wasn't much of a thing because the internet was so slow at the time. I'd gotten big into anime through Toonami, Tenchi Muayo, Gundam Wing, DBZ, Outlaw Star. So I started downloading series. But my hard drive was too small to store much I remember staying up late to watch the premiere of Cowboy Bebop on Adult Swim. 
a new metal was broke, and our area was able to support a few modern hard rock alt rock radio stations instead of the one anemic one we have now. The alternative kids were all wearing UFO or trip pants, huge wide and long pants, the trip kind had all sorts of chain and straps, and the UFOs had more of a parachute look with huge pockets on the legs, spiky hair was in, yellow or purple or pink dyes. Wearing long sleeves under a short sleeve shirt was a typical layering style ball chain necklaces were still really in style for that crowd too. Glasses were wire frame. The big chunky plastic frames weren't back in style yet. Nerd culture was just starting to become more mainstream. With the success of Harry Potter, The Lord of the Rings, Spider-Man, and X-Men movies. I remember being so excited to see Spider-Man we left directly from school with our backpacks and took the bus to the mall it came out in May 02 though, and they wouldn't let us in with them because of 9-11. We ended up hiding them behind the dumpster's privacy fence. Security found them just as we were walking out. I was born in 1986, and 2000 to 2004 were my final years of school too. Your post was literally like a carbon copy of my life back then. Reading it felt so familiar. It was as if I wrote it. I was the guy with the driver's license so oh, haha. And we road trip to see the Matrix Reloaded when it came out. Listening to Linkin Park. Limp Bizkit. Kid Rock. Eminem. Dre. D12. Snoop. Music was so good back then man. Office Space. 1999. And Idiocracy. 2006. Helped me cope through several 9-5 grinds. Those aren't comedies, they're horror slash documentaries. Lots of prank calls, bikes on neighbors lawns, manhunt, burning music onto CDs, boot cut jeans, folding sweat socks to makeshift ankle socks, lots of white air force ones, Avril Lavigne is complicated, mash, passing notes in class, gel pens, gel sandals, blisters, blow up furniture, waiting turns to go on the swings. A sense of stability and fulfillment that we were all blissfully unaware we had that we will never be able to attain again. There was a lot of clothing that was hot pink and black. There were Dorina's pants. Which are worth googling. I didn't know what rape culture was. When people yelled slap out of the car window at me and my friends. We would push each other and say you're the slap no. You're the slap at each other playfully. I waited on MSN until the boy I liked logged in. And then I would talk to him about nothing at all. People used gay and retarded as insults. My sisters listened to a lot of Ashanti and Jarul. I was listening to the Atari's CD on repeat. I thought Good Charlotte was for posers. There was an unreal amount of reality TV. We rented movies on the weekend. Hoping the boy you liked would talk to you on MSN first to see if he liked you. 9-11 the 2000s took a very fast nosedive into nationalism and security state nonsense. We never recovered. Oh hell it was weird. I was politically active at that time and had people calling me a terrorist cuz didn't tow the party line. Remember the best thing you can do is go shopping that one hit home because I lost my ass in the dot com bubble. Talking sock puppet my ass. I remember shopping at Claire's and Limited too. Juicy Couture was also popular back then. Ex-Tina and Britney absolutely ruling the pop scene. Avril Lavigne being the idol of those young ones that sorta wanted to be rebels but had to obey their parents. The emo phase. RAZR phones. First iPods. Still own my first generation iPod shuffle. Stuff like that. Got. Limited 2 was my favorite store when I was in middle school. I was also a fan of the Lizzie McGuire series back then so I would always try to grab the Lizzie McGuire inspired clothes from there whenever I shopped there. Then they closed down all their stores and teenage me was so sad. They revamped their brand and are now called Justice. But it's not the same anymore. I remember a lot more people being outside. Like going to the park. Tons of teenagers at the mall. And overall social. Outdoor activities. On a side note. Ever since COVID hit. I have noticed more people going to the park, walking, and riding bikes. I graduated high school in 99, so glad all the dumb shit we did wasn't put on the internet. I drank Zima and thought I was cool. Also, drugs. But I do remember when social media started the MySpace era. Facebook was dumb back then. Mambo no. 5 was popular for some reason. I think a radio station where I lived played that song on loop for all of 999. 
Lemuire and Morpheus were popular at least it was early 2000s for me. And this is where I gained a shit ton of ripped CDs. Which I do still have. I remember Y2K was going to be the end of days. Then nothing ducking happened. 20 years on and I'm realizing it just may have been the end. It's just really slowly happening. Y2K didn't cause any problems because people believed the experts when they warned them about the danger, and followed their advice to preemptively nip it in the bud. So yeah, it was a wildly different time. Spent most of it in a drug-fueled haze. What I can remember was big jeans and wholesome s crap. Most rap then wasn't wholesome at all. This is when Eminem first blew up. 50 Cent. Nelly's first hit is literally about him doing a drive-by shooting while smoking drugs. Oh my god. It totally was. That definitely went over my suburban white girl head until you just made me think about it. Uh the 11th of September. 2001 set off a lot of fear, anger, sadness and paranoia. Before that we thought no one could challenge our power. Before 9-11. Joining the army was like adult summer camp. The last war we fought was 10 years before and we steamrolled them. The whole zeros was all about 9-11 and the world it created. Now for most people it's a memory akin to Pearl Harbor. Now the 20s will all be about this virus and how our society changes and recovers. Before 9-11 airports were so much more relaxed. You never waited more than 5 minutes for security. Anyone without a ticket could go to the, the boarding gates. They really didn't even check your ticket before you boarded most of the time. I once got on the wrong flight thankfully it was going to the same place. I had gotten to the airport early enough to catch the earlier flight to the same city. No phone. No watch I never knew what time it was. Another question would be what were the late 90s like? I say that cuz in the US, 9-11 really didn't shake things up like no one had seen in the near past. I couldn't speak to the Vietnam era. But as soon as 9-11 came through, some of the hope of the new millennia went away. The service industry got hit pretty hard. It seemed like if you wanted a job pre 9-11, you could get something, anything. $10 an hour was enough in my city. Not high rolling but enough. I just remember a lot of stress about what's next. Similar to what's been happening recently. In the late 90s, there was a booming economy that seemed like it would only go up. The restaurant I worked at took about a 20% hit from pre to post 9-11. Now, that seems small but then, it was big. Dumb things about traveling and security were new, and seemed intrusive. Before, anyone could roam the airport like a mall, even going up to the gate to see PPL away. You could literally show up 10 minutes before boarding and get in the plane. PPL weren't so conscious, like even for alcohol and stuff. So long as you looked old enough, no one gave a crap. Food was cheaper. Just found an old family recipe and one of the main ingredients was these special peanuts. I bought 6 bags in 03 for just over $10. I bought the same brand last night and they were $4 a bag. I remember by around 2005 or so, things seemed sorta normal again. Except gas was really expensive. But at the time, it didn't impact me much. IDK. Seeds of uncertainty that this Gen Z hadn't seen. Until the last years. Things are pretty scary to me right now. My friends and I used to go hang out at the airport for fun on weekends. We'd make signs that said welcome home. Johnny. And wait at the gate. Then pretend to be devastated when Johnny never got off the plane. Those were very different times. Just a bunch of dial up noise in between the constant replay of all the small things. Everyone stop using paper plates and bags because save the trees. Now start using plastic everything because that's much better. Seems like the oil industry took a page from the food industry in the way that the food industry demonized fat by pushing sugar. Now we're realizing how terrible it was to push plastic. No internet as you know it. Less websites. No YouTube. Plus it was slow. Imagine trying to watch a 10 second clip only for it to take 5 minutes to load. No YouTube. Oh. But that brief little moment. That glimpse into the future of the internet. The last couple years of the zeros. The 0609 era of YouTube. An age where the Nintendo Wii was big news and the United States had proudly sworn in their first black president. Something changed right at the time. 
and it was amazing. I don't remember anything from my 7th grade year of school because YouTube had just come out. I'd stay up all night watching videos, often shitty YouTube poops, and sleep all day at school. It was stupid and terrible, but I have no regrets. That was one of the greatest years of my life. Just suddenly having this new platform. Life was different when you could suddenly watch the white sedan scene from Spongebob on repeat. Low rise jeans. Discmans and the infamous pink chocolate combination in every piece of clothes you owned. Oh god. The pink chocolate combo. And duck those low rise jeans. So uncomfortable. You had to constantly pull your shirt down. Which was designed to sit just below your belly button. To cover your ass. I can't tell you how embarrassing it was to discover that my entire chemistry class saw my ass crack. And the internet was so so different. It had been graphical for a while but there was strangeness abound. It was the wild west and large scale capitalism hadn't monopolized the majority of it yet. Sometimes for fun you would just type random words with a dot com to see if someone made a website for socks.com or widnoises.com. It seemed much more diverse and weird back then. Monetization has really homogenized much of the internet in my opinion. If one thing gets really popular tons of other websites or YouTubers or whatever copy that style, the freak flags used to fly much more proudly. There was also an early add-on called Stumble Upon that would redirect you to a random website and it was incredible. I miss that world. It felt much more real and gritty. Not in a dangerous way, though sometimes in a dangerous way, but more like walking down a New York City street than the Disney Main Street the internet is today. The average white kid was listening to corn or limp biscuit or some kind of new metal. If you were a white kid who listened to rap people called you a wigger. Everyone's pants were so baggy. Pants would only last a month before the threading on the leg opening would come loose. But some kids made a style out of this. Lot more machismo going around. Gay slurs were probably the most commonly used vocabulary words. No bullying or fighting over social media so everyone had to do it face to face. Biggest difference is social media really. Back then the weird, awkward kid with the funny haircut and dress style who wouldn't say anything to anyone stayed exactly that. Nowadays that same kid would be on social media as a poster child for their sexuality. Spewing political rhetoric. Attempting to dox people who thought different from them. And be a thousand times more popular than they would have been in 2000. Exposed thongs everywhere. It was a better time. People glow stick dancing while listening to the rude sandstorm. No smartphones but we had beepers. The last year's worth living in. Yeah I feel like American teens already had a very different experience from the rest of us. And then 9-11 happened. And while we were still watching Britney and the Backstreet Boys, the US declared war on Iraq. Of all places, we were all like what the duck. I was 9 on 9-11. I barely had any idea what was going on or why and even I was like wait, what does Iraq have anything to do with this? Speaking as an American, in the early 2000s, earnestness, self-awareness, and nuance had very little cultural currency. We were disconnected from reality, in every facet of life. From our pop culture to our economy, 9-11 was, somehow, not a wake-up call. It just threw us further into the facade, in a way. I think the current political situation is a division between those for whom the recession ended up being that long-needed wake-up call and those who couldn't turn away from the fantasy. But the internet was cooler, very wild west why. Even then, there was a giddiness that came with how fast it was changing. Knowing you'd found the next big music service or funny site, but knowing also that it would fold in a year or two. Imagine the crazy impermanence of it all. And then suddenly you've had a Facebook for 14 ducking years. Duck that shit. Mobile phones were becoming very popular, but popular music was getting worse. This comment honestly offends me more than anything else I've ever read on Reddit. Early 2000s pop music was amazing. Mariah. Britney. Kylie. TLC and BSB were all in their prime. It was basically the best that the genre has ever been. You guys are clearly different ages. RuneScape was life. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.